the Supreme Court has declined to lift a block on the Biden administration's sweeping student loan relief plan. The high court refusing to revive the White House repayment plan, instead choosing to wait for multiple lawsuits brought by GOP-led states to make their way through lower courts. So what does all, this all mean for student debt relief? Jonas Philbor is an attorney and legal analyst, joins us live. Randy Zellin is a criminal defense attorney and formal prosecutor. Welcome to you both. So, so Jonna, what is this? I mean, is this something new that we haven't seen before from the Supreme Court when it comes to student loan forgiveness? No, not exactly. In fact, quite the opposite, because the Supreme Court has already once said, wait a minute, Joe Biden, your administration, you can't do this without an act of Congress. But this administration has done what it loves to do, and that's basically give the finger to the Supreme Court and try to end run them. SCOTUS is having none of it. This was the product of a, a quote, emergency motion that was filed in the Eighth Circuit so that the program could remain in place while all these appeals were happening. And I have to pose the question, how is it an emergency? What former student is gonna die if they're forced to pay a smidge on their student loan debt. Exactly none. It's not an emergency. SCOTUS got this right. Let's get these appeals completed before we decide how this is this SAVE program is going to live or die. And frankly, legally, it should die. Yeah, these, the students and even myself years ago signed a promissory note. There are deferments out there that, that if you really needed the assistance. Uh, but the president went on to do this, and it kind of makes you feel um, a little bit of sympathy for those that bought into it because they thought their, some of their student debt's going to get wiped. The president said so. But the Supreme Court issued this brief order yesterday and interestingly included no dissents. It has, this is, we'll show you this, it has no immediate impact on the 8 million borrowers who are currently enrolled in the plan. It's known as SAVE. It's an acronym, Savings on a Valuable, Saving on a Valuable Education. Uh, Randy, I'll go to you on this. Are you kind of the, the same arrival spot that Jana is legally? I, I view it as Al Davis would have said if he was still alive. It's just politics, baby. Uh, the Democrats want to paint the Republican Trump conservative Supreme Court as being heartless, not caring about students who can't carry this crushing debt. And the Republicans want to be able to say, here we go, the Democrats against socialism. Who the hell's going to pay for it? The taxpayers are going to pay for it. So I think it's once again a very unfortunate misuse of our justice and judicial system, and it is more political lawfare. Yeah. And I'm wondering where in all of this steps are actually being taken to lower the cost of tuition. I mean, it's just yeah. resolving people's debt. We're not actually talking about the root problem here. We're not ah, even let's touching not it. talk about that. Yeah. No, don't, don't. <laughs> see, see, that would be the follow-up. Uh, John of the White House issued a statement, so we'll, we'll read it for our viewers here in case you're wondering. S someone who put this out, again, President Biden has been on vacation, but writing, our administration will continue to aggressively defend the SAVE plan, which has helped over 8 million borrowers access lower monthly payments, including 4.5 million borrowers who have had a $0 payment each month, and we won't stop fighting against Republican elected officials' efforts to raise costs on millions of their their own constituents' student loan payments. Um, any indication that, that this could stay without Congress's help, Jonna? No, I absolutely don't. Congress is going to have to weigh in on this. And frankly, I think right now what this administration is doing is simply using this as another political talking point. As Randy said, how about we fight for lowering the cost of gas, lowering the cost of eggs, things that actually will kill, kill people if they can't afford it. And set this aside instead of trying to appeal to the younger voters who are too dumb to know the economics of this and that all of us listening to us are the ones who are going to pay for this program because nothing is free. What they're advocating is communism. Give me all your money, I'll give you back a couple slices of bread. It's a bad idea, but it will keep the Democrats talking from now until November.